Hello everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here in TWR Thousand Week Reich, in which we are playing as a GGR under the Fat Man. So, last time we actually finished, almost, our economic tree. We still need to fund the bomb, and we need to do a few other things, the confidants, government, and de-escalation. And overall, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should go with focusing eastward or unite against communism. There's support for both sides, but I think there was, if I remember correctly at the time of this recording, there's just a little bit more support for diplomatic ties, if we can. But instead of doing that for now, let's kind of save that for now, and let's finish off some of this military stuff, especially Grois Deutsche Kriegsmarine. The Kriegsmarine, in theory, is a sharply honed instrument ready at all times to serve the Reich in defense of our interests. Wielding cruisers and battleships on par with the latest British models, it is a floating wall and rampart of Germany and the pride of the Fjord himself. That is, of course, in theory, in practice, the Kriegsmarine barely deserves the title of Navy, and what remains from the Civil War's carnage is badly outdated, massively unequipped, and utterly broken financially. We must act swiftly to modernize it, lest the jackals of the West destroys us for our weaknesses. Very cool. It is 1961, and in this episode, I don't know at the time of the beginning of this video whether it's going to be the last one or not. It might be, as you can tell from the title, it is or it isn't. Um, I just want to see if we can get through all these focuses quickly, because last time we were starting to actually modernize our economy. We can actually build stuff, finally, and we don't really have that many interactions going on. A comment from not yesterday's video, but the video before yesterday, uh, from that one, like episode 5, I think said, if I do inv eventually invade Italy, if possible, that I should keep Sutarol and uh, Slovenia, annex them into the Reich, but then just kind of puppet everything else. Kind of a cool idea. Uh, we'll probably try that. It's 1960. Um, I'm not sure what we can do with all this stuff. Let's get some support companies, like Recon. I think that'd be kind of nice. But we want time to go on as fast as possible, because we want to get through the focus tree as quickly as possible to see if anything else happens. Because after the war with the Soviet Union, or even before the war with the Soviet Union, things kind of, well, got a little calm. A little too calm for my liking. Engineer 3 is done. We can probably go ahead and grab some maintenance companies as well. That'd be good. As we're just continuing to try to repair our equipment levels, which are actually coming along very nicely. Heroes Day, of course, like normal. More stability. More political power. Good stuff always to have. We need more carrier fighters, even though we have jet carrier fighters. Okay, whatever. Uh, equipment, sword, port equipment is looking very good. Infantry equipment. Artillery is actually looking pretty good as well now. We do need more just motorized or vehicular aspects of our army, which would be a good thing to do. We can do that by five, by five. Increase that by five, because now, let's see. We're going to come over here, and we're going to look at our infantry. And tell our infantry, well, we're kind of done using you for that. Actually, you know what? We're not done using them. Can we make them any bigger? Light infantry. Let's make them thick infantry. 40 combat with anyone? I should have thought of this a little earlier, but sometimes my brain just does not work. It happens, you know. Uh, 40 combat with is probably the way to go. Let's be real. Uh, let's see. We're out of artillery, which is fine, whatever. We're okay on infantry equipment. We did lower, I believe, by quite a bit yesterday. Yeah, by 5. Get it down to 3. That'll be okay for now. We still need a buttload more artillery now, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Do that as well, do that, put you at the bottom right with the guns, and we have Gross Deutsches Kriegsmarine. High Seas Fleet. So the German High Fleet, Hochsee Flotilla, or Flota, was the main battle fleet of the German Imperial Army Navy and saw action during the First World War. The formation was created in February 1907 when the first home fleet was renamed as a High Seas Fleet. Gross Admiral Alfred von Thurpitz was the architect of the fleet. He envisioned a force powerful enough to challenge Royal Navy's predominance. After a defeat due to the incompetence of Wilhelm II, it was seized by the British, but a man. Uh, but are men to prevent it from being used by the Entente for their own sc scuttled it at Scapa Flow. We shall get revenge uh, by sink. We got revenge by sinking the HMS Royal Oak in the early days of the war at Scapa Flow when the Greeks Marine was no match for the Royal Navy. The Führer has rechristened the home fleet as a Hoxi Flotilla, just like the old days, and has instructed the OKM to expand and strengthen it to be reminiscent of the old Hoxi Flotilla or Flotilla. Cool. Uh, we did that, and we did all this. Good. We're done with the land doctrine. We are done now with our land auction. Let's go ahead and get some destroyed cruisers. How about some better cruisers? I love better cruisers. It is 61, so we must get the best that we can possibly get. And soon enough, we will have a 1960s carrier hull to work with. And maybe we'll do some heavy ship hulls as well, because we can. There we go. If you want to read about them, uh, there you go. 1960s hulls. Very good. Engine 3. That'd be very nice. We don't have... Oh, yeah, we do have some naval XP. So let's go and do this real quick, because we can. Throw in another hangar space. That'd be great. En carrier engine 3. Radar 2. Airspace hasn't really fixed up anything. That's okay. Make you. And I'll get rid of you. Thank you. Very much. Just go ahead and put you... Oh. 
Okay, there we go. Um, not really sure where to put you. Just put you in the theater one. That's fine for now. Yeah, this is all stuck on auto. That's fine. Whatever. Mayday. Thank you, workers. Thank you very, very much for everything that you do. Uh, anything else? Public exhibition. Get more political power because you might as well at this point. Oh, we're losing manpower because probably because we need to uh, fill up these divisions with good, thick divisions. Good, thick, powerful divisions. Plenty of guns. Plenty of support equipment, which is nice. Anti-tank. Artillery is looking a little better. We already have 7,000 plus more, which is awesome. APCs are not looking great. Infantry fighting vehicles. Yeah, I should have thought about this a little bit earlier. IFVs. Oh, these are APCs and IFVs. I can convert them probably. Convert like half of them to main battle tanks probably. That'd be okay. Even though obviously we're going to need way more tanks. Way, 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 way more. Way more. So many more. Oh, look at that man. It's slowly going down as we're refilling the stockpile of soldiers. Needed for all areas of the military. Hopefully other things happened last time. Spain, of course, the third Spanish Republic, was taken out by the Allies. They're now liberals. And they're now a puppet of the U.S. Oh, boy. America influencing European directions. Of course. Cool. Let's go and do a second wolf pack. So during the war, the U-boats were extremely effective in destroying Allied and then sh Soviet shipping. Trade and war supplies and food was extensive and critical for Russia's survival. Our continued actions by the U-boats evolved into hunting in what were called wolf packs, where multiple submarines would stay close together, making it easier for them to sink a specific target. This tactic was, of course, called Rudel Tactique, and extensively developed by Gross Admiral Karl Dönitz was and was used to devastating effects and starving the Bolsheviks of foreign aid during the war. With a general post-war disinterest in building it up, uh, offensive capabilities and resources primarily invested in the East to fight the partisan movements there, the u boat arm of the Kriegsmarine has fallen behind in terms of strength and unity and quality. And the OKM has been ordered by the Fiat to bring the u boat fleet into fighting into fighting shape. Plus 20% more attack is no laughing matter. Holy crud, that's a lot of attack. Uh, some better field hospitals, because we can. I might as well just research all this stuff as quick as possible. We might as well. There's no point to not do it, right? We have five research slots. We're pretty good. We almost have a million people in the army. We're only on limited conscription. We can go all the way up to extensive conscription or service by requirement if we really needed to. Maintenance 3, thank you very much. Let's go Logistics 3 because I love better supply. Nice. So we have minus 5,600 main battle tanks and minus 6,000 APCs. Artillery, we've already reduced the deficit again by 500 pieces of our equipment. So it's looking not too bad as well. Really not too bad. Hopefully we can improve this even further and further as time goes on. Main battle tanks that are only 20 combat width. I would like to make them 40 combat width, but we can't really afford that now. Just like our infantry, they're 40 combat width. Initiative's pretty good. Uh, initiative from their signal companies, plus, plus, plus. That's a lot of soft attacks, 666.9. Not bad. These Panzer 25th are, actually have less, but they're only 20 combat width, of course. Uh, infantry divisions, yeah. Mm, I don't know about that one, man. I, I, I don't know about that. Throw another APC in then. That's a little better. You got a little bit less soft attack, but you got probably more organization. You're in actually a good amount. 20 combat width is which you should almost always aim for. 10, 20, or 40. Anything other than that is not great. It's not terrible, but not great. Over here, we're not going to do that. And anything for engineering, anything for industry, of course not. 60. Let's go and grab some better anti-tank. Anti-tank 5, that'd be very good. More hard attack, more piercing, that's always useful. Um, yeah, just, I don't know. Thoughts? Um, I got some thoughts running in my head, some thoughts not. We'll see what happens, of course. Uh, hopefully something happens. I really want something to happen. Ah, 1960s cruiser. Very good. Sonar Nox naval modules. Well, that's okay. Uh, let's grab some dual-purpose batteries next, and then we'll maybe improve our hulls. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens first. Heavy ship hulls. We, we might as well get that finished. Very, very good. Let's go ahead and grab anything else here. Yeah, let's go grab some advanced medium batteries. That'd be nice to put on our carriers, or cruisers, I mean, as well. Second wolf back. Great. All purpose subs. Well, we're going to get down here quickly. So, let's produce them faster. To build up our U-boat strength, the various production methods need to be co consolidated to increase output. The OKM is coordinating with the Transportation Ministry to create exclusive rail and rail road networks to the shipyards and is also coordinating with the ship biggest shipyards to start it up in modular construction, meaning means and methods to drastically decrease U-boat uh, production already okay i'm special inspector teams with which deputed deputized u-boat officers with their extensive first-hand knowledge have been dispatched to give advice and feedback to the u-boat construction shipyards to ensure fulfillment of the new quotas and directives issued by the okm for increased u-boat naval production very good very very good get as much as you possibly can get more political power because why not as we are slowly slowly increasing our industrial capacity which is awesome all right cool so I'm just reading things really quickly in this 
episode just because I want to get through stuff as fast as possible. Here, oh, we can't go to a war mobilization. And honestly, I would like to go to war with Italy. I think at least go to war with someone else would be nice. That'd be fun. But we can't. War gales can only be a gain from national focuses, events, or other decisions, which does kind of suck, to be honest with you. Uh, do that one. That'd be good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I hope someone else goes to war. I want to see the USA go to war. Maybe China. I would love to see China go to war. Please. Dong by Industrial Revival. Do they have an option to go to war maybe eventually? Executive Committee and Disarray. Always false. Nothing is in disarray. New Life. Wait. Conservatism. Education Reform. And Martial Law. Changes of government type. Labor Laws. Martyrs of the Republic. Three Principles of Unification. Social Reforms. The Designer of China. Huh. Interesting. Not seeing too much here, though. The Factory of Asia. Not seeing too much here for, like, war goals or anything like this. Miracle of the Yangtze. Kind of cool. I have to play as China someday. The Currency Problem. Huh. Oh, they don't have enough political power to do that. Secondary purpose, secondary batteries. Purpose, secondary. I'm sorry, I'm talking really fast. Sometimes I can't even speak correctly. Oh, we can wait. Let's get some heavier guns. That'd be nice. And we can maybe improve. We want to build both. We don't have enough naval XP for both, however. Let's still suck on one. Uh, secondary batteries, no. We want rapid fire. Uh, we gotta wait. We, we want cruiser 4 stuff, so for you guys, maybe instead. Field hospitals are nice. Can we get a 3? Not yet. We gotta wait still some more. That's fine. Let's go ahead and grab some signal companies. That'd be very nice. Better signal companies, I should say. Better ones. We already have them. But we need better ones. Refine sub reductions, and then we shall do... Anti-sub warfare. Let's uh, kickstart naval production. Oops, my bad. Uh, you know, we can let time go on as we read it. So, with recent extreme political happenings in the Reich, naval production has been less than a priority and it has grinded to complete halt. Half-completed hulls of battleships and carriers are lying in dry docks. Some are even being scrapped or turned into merchant ships and sold into, into two international buyers. The Führer has been increasingly worried about a disproportionate naval production to the West. The OKM and the Ministry of Armaments and Production have set up a spe special committee whose purpose is to ensure production in all the major shipyards have restarted and fast-tracking the construction of the capital ships laid down or to be laid down. Wow. For 100 days, we get faster output. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe we should continue increasing this. Henschel? We get, uh, I guess we'll do this one. It should be fast and light. It looks like for a scout helicopter. That's okay with me. Scout copters go wee. Yeah, you must do that. Overseas testimony. We must do that as well. Constructed chemical weapons. Um, I don't want to hurt our industry yet. We're barely getting by right now, so I uh, might as well do that eventually. But anything else? Ah, eh, get some naval modules. Why not? Now, was it this one that we wanted? Cruiser holes. Radar, two, that's fine. Armor. How do we get better armor for our cruisers? I don't know. Let's do that one then. There's cruiser three, that's nice. Rapid fire four. I really doubt we'll actually ever use these, but you know, it's kind of nice to think that we would. Rapid fire, pretty good. I think three is the max we got there. That's max. Actually, that's not too bad. Capital ship, no thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, you are done. You are now the cool carrier. Cruiser, cruiser, cruel cruiser. And we need still to fix up our battleships, or potential battleships eventually. Anti-tank 5, very good. Let's go ahead and grab, not that. Uh, Mountaineers might be worth doing now. Researched, and it's not 62 yet. That's not bad, armor. Oh, oh, we can grab better tanks, I'll do that one. E-55s, yes please. We would gladly welcome them on board. Let's see, with our focus. We are a little more than halfway. That's not bad. Yeah, it looks like we need more manpower, though. Germania. Where else would I build civilian factories? Uh, look how developed it is. Look at that. Look at that architecture. Metropolis. Less division speed, more organization and regain. Less division attack, more... Plus 60% defense. God dang. Attrition from weather only applies if the controller is at war. Huh. Memorial Day. Remember the beer hall. Cool. Get more political power. That means almost nothing to us, but whatever. Radar would be eventually nice to have as well up here, and then probably over here, and then probably over here, just to keep an eye on what's going on down here. You never know. But I kind of doubt we'll ever really be able to use it, effectively. But over there, uh, let's see, over there, you never know. That's fine. I mean, we got we got enough going on that doesn't really matter. Kicks off naval productions. Let's go and do some new age battleships. I'm going to go ahead and click on that so we can let time go on just a little bit more as uh, we read it about the description.
So, at the time when they were commissioned, Bismarck and her sister ship Tirpitz were the largest battleships ever built by Germany and two of the largest built by any European power, but that was still over 10 years ago. Though the ships of the Bismarck class are still formidable, but the West has developed a series of ships that are comparable or have comparable specifications and abilities that make several of our best battleships lose their edge over the American and British navies. The Führer has ordered the LKM to cover up with the specifications and designs of a new class of battleships that can even make the mightiest ships of the West cower in fear and snow show the world what just what the German technical knowledge can build. Yes, please. Get the best ships, might as well get some attack subs, because why not? Attack subs are fun, right? Very fun attack subs. Very, very fun. God, I want, I wish Burgundy could go to war with the French state, or the French state can go to war with Burgundy, try to claim their losses. They're doing dockyard expansion. What is, what has he been up to? Holy crap. He's got a good bureaucracy. He's pretty neutral on most things, though, unfortunately. Diplomatic relations, he's got cooperation, he's got an internal market, reform military system. France has army training, new French Navy, the modern republic. Okay. Confidence. So in our reintegration of the Jews, they, they like the them of the civilian religion. A particular religion there. 1960s long range subs. Screw it, we might as well do it. Why not? Uh Turkey. Does Turkey have a unique focus suite? I kinda doubt it. Oh um, they got jet bombers. Nah, it's pretty generic. Generico for here. For now. Romania. Oh, I don't. Do that. They have industrial efforts. No, it's pretty generic as well. That's okay. Bulgaria, Sardom, Hellenic states. Oh, they got a lot of things. Mediterranean Union member. Last time Benito actually passed away, so he's no longer with us. Death to gorillas. Lightning war. Um, okay. Croatia is a puppet of Italy, so. Gonna focus rate. Signal companies three. Well then, uh, we could do that. Not really. That's okay. Let's get improve our things here. So, let's get some better APCs. Very nice. We've got about two weeks left before we need to do all that stuff over there. Public exhibition for more political power. Uh, let's see. No, we can do that as well. Currently, we still get 2.05 a day because we're doing the exhibitions. Research-wise, we have anything in two weeks. No, we do not, which is good. And New Age Battleships will finish up soon. And we can do either Anti-Sub Tactics or Proudest Tactics. We'll probably do Proudest Tactics because we can. Construct a carrier. We could add that once we run out of things to do. But I really am gunning for getting rid of the massive navy. So, proudest tactics. The Kriegsmarine is a mighty hammer of the Reich, but that can pound at its enemies all the way in the Pacific. It's a proud and strong navy whose foundation stones were laid by the legendary Gross Admiral, Admiral, Gross Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz, which still stands strong today. The OKM has launched an ideological revolution by inculcating the old and proud traditions of the navy amongst its officers to come up with new brilliant tactics and doctrines. This movement can, of course, potentially alter every commander's thinking at the grassroots level and potentially lead to an entirely, entirely new generation of innovative officers who are not afraid of thinking outside the box. More naval doctrine would be great. Unfortunately, though, I think we already finished our naval doctrine. But that's okay. Happy 1962, my friends. It's a new year. Not quite a new yus. New yus? New us. I'm talking very fast, I know. I know I'm talking very, very fast. Uh, I probably had some coffee before I started recording, so it is what it is. Where are you guys? Um, hmm. Maybe put you somewhere else. Maybe put you... Uh, they don't have a really good supply over here, do they? It's not bad. It's not great. Supply probably is really bad over here, though. Okay, so part of the problem is, I think we still have that bad national spirit over here. Like, overextended supply. Company's profits are not bad. Welfare programs. Kickstart naval production. That'd be good. Yeah, we still have overextended supply, which makes no sense why it's still active. But it is what it is. Actually, let's go ahead and do this instead. So, we got those planes. Let's get some attack planes. Or attack uh, helicopters. I'm actually going to do this instead. So, you guys. Come right there. That'll be fine for now. I'll have you guys do something like that. Ooh. Uh, subs? Let's get some uh, destroyers, because we can. Because we can research a whole lot right now. That's fine. And actually, I'm going to put you guys by Romania. We have not decided to do anything with the Romania yet, which is fine. You know, it's just Romania. But still. But still. Uh, stop training. Now, train again. Let's see what happens. We have a million manpower. How many people do we get a month? We get about 6,000. Not bad. Mechanized. Looking good, of course. We aren't really focusing on it. Artillery is looking pretty great, I would have to say. Uh, main battle tanks not looking too bad, and APCs aren't looking too bad either. Kickstart naval production. It has gone away. It is what it is. Uh, jet cast, not bad. Carrier fighters, not bad. Long range subs. I will get some frigate holes, because we can. Beautiful things. Oh, we need to get better planes, too. We should probably honestly get better planes, because better planes are a good thing to have. And then we shall do anti submarine warfare next. Once this focus is, of course, complete. 
Uh, today, the role of the U-boat fleet has evolved from just sinking merchant ships to a multitude of roles, among others include serving in the anti-submarine warfare role. Anti-submarine warfare is a branch of the underwater warfare that uses surface ships, aircraft, and other submarines to find, track, and deter damage or destroy enemy subs. Successful anti-submarine warfare depends on a mix of sensor and weapon technology, training and experience, sophisticated sonar equipment for the first detecting, and then classifying, locating, and tracking the target submarine and is an element or key element of the ASW to destroy subs. Both torpedoes and naval mines can be used, and they can be launched from air, surface, or underwater platforms. With the members of the Toronto Toronto Accords now feeling a considerable underwater fleet, our U-boat fleet must be able to match and defeat them. This would mean a change in tactics, different protocols, and equipping our ships with new sensing equipment and training our crews to be familiar with all of them. That sounds like it's going to be very expensive, but I think we'll be okay under Mr. Fat Man here. And actually, in the game files, when I'm looking at creating like a thumbnail, I look at the game files to see if I can actually get the portrait of the guy. There's a portrait of old Herman Goring, so I know there's like a long timeline of things that could happen. But eventually, Goring gets old. He does get old, and he doesn't look very good. Just saying, you know, um, it's just what it is. What it is. But I wonder how far the game is supposed to stretch out. I really don't know. Maybe just ten years. Since it is sixty-two, I think we began in fifty-two. So it is what it is. Let's see. Oh, man. We got a little of those consumer goods, but keep making those factories. I love the production that we have currently. Sixty-two, not bad. April fourth in two days. That is nice. Hey, there we go. Hero's Day is gone, that's okay. Hey, another main battle tank. Love it, love it, love it. How are these guys looking? Not bad, they're getting better. Ah, very good. Can we get this? No, we cannot. Uh, we could improve APCs. Um, anything Flak Panzer? Oh, we can get some more. Oh, that's how you get better anti-air for our ships. Okay, that's fine with me. Now let's get even some better tanks. Nice, good stuff. Now we, don't, we still don't have enough resources. Hmm. And I really don't understand. Why is everyone... Hmm. Hmm. I guess they're still repairing. We had so many ships hurt that they all still need to repair. They're not training. Look at all these subs that need to... I don't understand. The Schoenholst? Tuppets? Alright, so let's go with this. If we see the Blucher again, that means they're still training or something in the seas. I don't think I told them to train, though. Yeah, they're not trained. Just go... Just go and repair. If we see the Blucher again, that means they're just doing stuff... And they're repairing indefinitely for some reason, which I don't understand. But we have a massive navy we must deal with. The Kriegsmarine has been able to complete several of its recent endeavors more or less successfully, but the Americans and British need to be made to realize that their war with the Reich is one they cannot ever possibly hope to win. The Kriegsmarine will be expanded more extensively and aggressively, eventually culminating the expansion program with a massive exercise in the North Sea to remind the British who lost the last war to whom and why. This massive display of power, of course, will most likely induce the West to try to be friendly with us, unless they face our wrath, or if not, sufficiently scare them to not intervene when we try to expand our sphere of influence to other parts of the world, possibly all the way to Asia. Nice. Oh, Goring. What a dude. What a dude. Oh, we got that one done. That's nice. That's okay. We don't really need that. Siemens. It's okay. That's okay. Conglomerate. That's really good. Goring. More. Plus 20%. Plus that's, that's something to laugh at. That's pretty good, actually. Um, hmm. I'll do IFVs eventually. Let's, let's get a Flak Panzer, because we can. The SPAA. Better APC. It's probably not a good idea if we want to make a lot of them, but... It's okay, whatever. I, I am tempted to make some refineries, but at this point, I think we're okay. We're just kind of hanging on. I don't think we can still trade away for resources, can we? Oh, we can! Okay, um, well, it doesn't hurt us too much. As long as we keep making some more civilian factories, that's all I really care about right now. And we're actually doing okay on APCs. Great, we'll hopefully have a lot done. We need more tungsten, we need more chromium, but I'm going to focus on APCs first. I think that would be a okay objective for us. For you guys, go ahead and put some maintenance. Oh, we don't have enough army XP. Cool. If you guys, if you get, these guys got people that need to train, just train, train, train all day. Blaskovitz, you got anything for us? You're looking kind of old, Blaskovitz. Not gonna lie, you're looking kind of old. Region wide integration, sure. Overseas testimonies, sure. Public exhibitions, sure. Improved capabilities, sure. Improved ammunition, sure. At this point, I'm just going to let time go on just a little bit more, just so we can get things more and more quickly done. Very cool. Transport helicopters. I have no idea how to use helicopters still, but it is what it is, you know. Ah, 1960s destroyer hulls. Good, let's get Corvette hulls. I'm not going to use them, but that's okay. We're just going to research as much as we can, and now we've got a massive navy. We construct, can construct a carrier. Let's go ahead and do 
Ooh, gross Deutsch is here. The Gross Deutsch is here. The land force component of the Wehrmacht is the largest, most decorated of the three branches, despite achieving massive victories in the East and West alike. The here has fallen far from its glory days a decade ago, lacking the destructive and fearsome power it had once had. We must bring back the here into a fighting shape if we were to once again be ready for anything that may befall our great nation. Well, I mean, we already went to war with the USSR like two episodes ago, and I did give these guys the Russian Republic, like, the territory, as you can see. But, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I kind of hope Russia, like, Oh, the construction engineering. Do they are they done? Don't tell me they're done. Go to war with me, please. Go to war. The Soviet border war. Moving through. Oh, oh man. Conquest of Mongolia. Fortress. Spring Sakhalin. Immigration program. Chinese advisors. God, man. Please fight me. Fight me. Uh, landing craft would be very good to do as well. I think that's just. If we needed it, we could. It's good to grab it. So. All right. Let's look over here. Main battle tanks not looking great, really not looking great at all. But APCs, they're no, they're looking pretty good. Flak Panzers, I'm just gonna let that time go on a little bit, get some better speed for them. That looks really awesome. It's okay. I just want to speed this up as fast as possible to get through as much of the focus tree as possible because, well, honestly, this is probably gonna be the final episode. I probably won't be able to get through every focus, especially if I have to read them all. But that's fine, whatever. You know, we get the general gist of what happens. I mean, if we can improve it here as much as possible, that's great. Actually, we got rid of that. Oh, look at that. That's so beautiful. We got four runs. More like three and then some. Let's do two at a time and then, yes. Look how fast we built infrastructure. Look at that. September 3rd. In like less than a month, we can build one level of infrastructure. Yes. Very much yes. Yes, 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 yes. Because I would like to at least finish off combat ready. That would be good. I think that would be good for us. Uh, nothing really down there that's really interesting. Anything over here for the old guards? Army X... Ooh, that's okay. More daily political power gain. More army XP gain. Field Marshal Goldring. I'd like to expand the officer corps next. So, the officers of the German armed forces since their inception have primarily come from the elite Prussian Junker class. Along with this, our armies are still mainly commanded by veterans from the war and are exceptional and brilliant but growing old, culminating of these and other reasons, which has led to the officer corps being under strength. The Fuhrer wants to see new officers but wants loyalty as well, as per his instructions and the over... Oberkommando des Heers has started courses of all Kriegsschule to train NCOs recommended by the commanding officers for officer training, which will of course ensure expansion of the officer corps with loyal and competent personnel. Great, and we have finished improved ammunition, in which we should grab improved firepower next for more anti-air attack. Even though we're not going to be using the things at all, it's still good to be prepared and be technologically ahead of time, even if we can't use the stuff. It's always good to be prepared with and understand what technologies are at play here and there. Danish state. No unique focus tree, probably. Uh, well, at least a little bit. They do get the option of leaving and maybe going more communist. Join the Toronto Accord. Eh, maybe just more like democratic, maybe. Sweden? Do you have anything here? Not really. Of course, the UK, I'm sure, has something, right? Yeah, they got something here. They can privatize, they can have national work projects, a nationalization program, workshop of the world... British Army, British Royal Air Force, the Navy, the Sun sets. Oh, our own destiny. Huh. The Queen's Empire Tour, the Sun never sets. Winds of Change. Huh. Engine upgrade one, cool. Uh, good, the Flak Panzer Katza, a cat Flak Panzer, very cool. I would have really liked to be able to get nuclear technology. I'm not sure. I'm not. Sure, I would have, would have really liked if we were able to get there, but it really doesn't seem like we will be able to. German air industry, not bad. I wish we got rid of consumer goods factories, but that's okay. Keep building, guys. Keep building, Friesland. Uh, I love an integrated Netherlands. The Swamp Germans. I love them. Kind of, sort of, not really, but maybe, maybe really. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Cool. Let's go ahead and do next. Ooh, that's the de-escalation. The Americans are always on, on, always on edge with us, and we don't blame them. Historically, we have not been on the best terms. We, however, do need to set aside our differences and focus on a common desire not to blow our nations into a dark age. We will do our best not to be as confrontational as we have in the past, and even give some ground here and there. The Wilhelmstrasse speech event, which gives us something to think and for look forward to. I think that'd be good. If we can have a, you know, a de-escalation of Cold War practices, that would be good. As though we were building ourselves up. Let's look at our GDP. It is, it's catching up. It's actually catching up to the Americans quite a bit faster than what they're doing, which is awesome. If we can overtake the Americans in terms of GDP, I would say this has been a very successful campaign. Don't mind us not having a civil war and the fat man taking control of our nation. That's all under the boat and, you know, stuff like that. But that's okay. If you want to read about the fighters, there you go. 
1960s uh, jet fighters, very cool, very useful actually. And getting those carrier fighters would be actually very good as well. And now we have... Oh, a pause game. Corvette hole is very cool, let's grab some modern naval mines, even though I probably won't even use them. It's fine with me, 16 days left. De-escalation. Very cool. So he actually hurts us with our economy law, which makes sense. Uh, better age generation chance. F plus 50% of political power is just so much. Sure, why not? Why not? Oh, whoops. Clicking too fast. Uh, Landcraft, very cool, very cool. Go on and get some of this. Advanced heavy batteries, yes please. That would be some good stuff. Uh, let's see, over here. APCs are looking great. We no longer have a deficit of APCs. Awesome. Lower you by five then. Black Panzer Katza, very good. Go ahead and grab this outfit. Why not? Better engine upgrade? Why not? We're running out of things to research anyways. We could research planes immediately, but I, I think we'll be okay. So We got six days left. How many more of this? Actually, we didn't even spend any time doing an intelligence agency, but at this point, I can't really be bothered with it. So, Great. And we can do that, but let's keep doing our army. Traditional warfare. So no matter how many tanks or planes are employed in the battle, it is the foot soldier that always takes the fight in the end. All the tanks and other planes in the world are of no use during a military campaign, or the boots on the ground can't can't move to take and hold the new ground. And in the end, pure ground and traditional warfare decides the success of military operations during a legendary blitzkrieg of the 40s. Uh, and all the glory went to the, all the glory went to the Panzer Truppen and the Luftwaffe. But in the end, it was the traditional tactics that whittled down massive enemy pockets. With the emergence of these new unconventional maneuver tactics, the traditional warfare theories that have been neglected, which are equal if not more important than unconventional warfare, our war academics or academies have to re-emphasize and bring back the courses from times of Clausewitz to ensure that traditional warfare tactics can keep up with unconventional tactics. We basically get attack and defense. Bonus. And the Velum Strasse speech is ceremonies held in the Ministry of Aviation building, honoring the elite and heroes of the Luftwaffe. Goring held the speech and the ceremony, of course, to praise Luftwaffe and the professionalism and telling stories of, their own past of his own past experience. And it had an unexpected turn, though, after 40 minutes. To speak about the current political affairs, proclaiming that German Reich no longer seeks to engage in active conflicts with the world, and that prosperity does not grow from the barrel of a gun, and this he signaled a few Western journalists in the hall, saying that we have won the total war against the Jewish Bolshevism for decades, telling them that he is extending an olive branch by throwing the world a bone. A normal speech. The speech ended not long after, and the hall stayed quiet. Oh boy. So I wonder... Oh, there we go. The Goring Doctrine. Invite Lindbergh as part of the relations between the Germany and the West warms up. A variety of options have become open from Germany. From becoming a part of the global community, securing lucrative trade deals with foreign comp companies, Goring Doctrine is an exciting prospect for the Reich as a step further towards global integration. Perhaps Germany can also use this, Germany can use this opportunity to preach about the ideals of national socialism. Charles Lindbergh's visit, inviting the Americans. Germany's desire for peace is clear for the world to see. More political power? Ah, oh, sure. We'll invite Lindbergh. He's a high-profile American that aligns with our ideological beliefs. Perhaps we can use his status and his hopes of peace as a political tool for the Reich. Oh, Mr. Lindbergh was a man of many tales, hero, victim, traitor, truly a few names of the 20th century that evoked so many myriad of emotions in the American populace like the name Lindbergh. The first was easy. This one, he had been baptized with being upon the first man to cross the Atlantic by plane in one flight. The second one was a bit more complicated given to him upon the so-called crime of the century, as his infant son was kidnapped and subsequently murdered, unfortunately causing the U.S. to adopt an entire law for it, and finally the much more complicated title of traitor. First hold of him for the engagement in the anti-war crowd and his sympathy for the Germans, he of course had certainly refused his slanderous name by fighting viciously against the Japanese during the war, but even with the latter dying in nuclear headfire, the ascens ascendance of the German Reich had struck his uh, last title like glue to him. And considering where he is right now, this last name may even eclipse the former one. Yet as he waited in the shade of an opulent pavilion in the garden of an even more opulent villa on the outskirts of Germania, he for the first time since the name had been given to him did not forget it anymore, for the meeting he was able to attend would be forever prove his patriotism to America, because the man now stepped out into the warm German sun, uh, which was no other than the leader of the only country that could hope to best the United States on the battlefield, him and Goring, and he was here for peace, not war. Goring's enthusiasm, enthusiasm shone brighter than his sun. It's truly... Lindbergh thought this is the man to save both America and the world. At last, the pointless standoff would come to an end. So he finally indulged Goring, proclaiming that he would make sure that the, the man's words heard across the Western world. The man yelled a toast for him and his country, but did not really hear what he said, nor really taste the ludicrously expensive champagne. He was already deep in thought as to how this glorious news may best be made palpable to the American public. So he remained lost in thought till his machine landed once again on American soil, but that's none of Germany's concern. He shall be a messenger. Good. Oh, hello Lindbergh, a truly unexpected development. Cool. Inviting the Americans. I'm glad at least we can have this to do as the final kind of thing we do in the game, so. We shall invite the Americans and see what happens. We truly want peace. 
Especially since we are catching up in GDP, so America, you best be cat watching out. We only have 40 less, less than 40 GDP behind them, and we are, oh, we need to make more civilian factories. So we got that done, we're going to put it right there. Turn it again, we shall slowly spread out from the capital, increasing our civilian output. And roads. And lots and lots of roads. Everywhere. Very nice. Actually, oil's nice. Advanced heavy batteries, that's good. Good. Uh, let's go tank one a little bit more. Let's go and grab some of these advanced light batteries. That'd be very good. But at least we got some events. We're halfway there. Not bad. Cool. Still two a day. It's so good. Actually, having been glory, inviting the Americans. Oh, that, inviting the Americans really have to stop traditional warfare. Good. Uh, how about we increasing the numbers? Less organization, but better recruitable population factor. Since our war against the Soviet Union ended in the mid-40s, and now 60s, or early, maybe 59, we have begun facing issues in recruiting enough members for the other new strength here specifically. Large losses in the Russian campaign, a massive insurgency in the East, and specifically the hero's role in combating, it has led to large casualties and reluctance of new recruits to opt for the hero over other branches of the Wehrmacht, for the same reasons as the probability to be casualty is much less in the Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine, and also the recent extreme political situations have led to group and drops for all three forces in general. The Führer has instructed the Ministry of Propaganda to launch a massive propaganda campaign to increase recruitment in general, and the Defense Ministry to increase the salaries of the HEAL specifically, to make an attractive option for new recruits. Very, very good. Very, very good, my friends. Let's grab some ammunition upgrades. That'll be good for more air attack. And we'll see what happens. Because I want, at the very least, get down here to get rid of that. From ground to air, because Luftwaffe is actually not too bad. America accepts! Our letter to the American prison has imme immediate effects. We've received a direct response from D.C. informing us that they're willing to negotiate or arrange a high-level summit, officially accepting the summit of opening a dialogue between Germany and the U.S. This is a major step forward for the German diplomacy, and soon we'll be able to spread our message far and wide with the help of the American media. The summit will be held on American soils in the sleepless skies in New York City. Until then, we must prepare for the summit. Great! Oh no, it happens next month. Oh boy! Uh, infantry. Hopefully nothing bad happens. I want to say that there's potential that something bad will happen. But you never know. It might be really good. It might be really bad. We got more public exhibitions. Good, good, good. Hopefully this doesn't lead to another war. But you know if it does? Great then. Truly great. In three weeks we'll have this done. That's three weeks. This will be done tomorrow. Or two days. Good. GDP just keeps on going up. 289. And we just made another civilian factory. Is that still 289? No. Oh. Yep, still 289. That's fine. So it's almost March 25th. So it's 289. And once that one gets made, we're going to look at it again. Done with helicopters. Light aircraft. Let's get some interceptors, even though we're not going to even be using them. Good, we got that done. Let's go and get some uh, carrier jet fighters. That'd be very good as well. Even though we can't make any because we are out of equipment or... Out of tungsten. It is disappointing, I know. And let's go ahead and grab one more of this. There we go. Has it been made? The American German summit starts. So, a spe special modified America bomber is landed in New York soils. On New York soil. Headed, for, headed from Germany is most special. special I'm sorry, I'm talking really fast. I'm tripping over my own words. It's most special passengers from Goring. As Goring stepped out of the plane, uh, President Patton greeted Goring, but both of them examined the military. Military band present. As the band finished playing for the Star Spangled Banner, the tunes of the host of Vessel Lead began to play. The strangest twists of events and humanity began to unfold in front of humanity's lives. Ah, America. Cool. Diesel powered emergency pumps? Why not? And look at that. So your GDP goes up by like a little bit more than one every time. So the embargo question. Since the foundation of the Toronto Accord, the US is America. The U.S. and her allies have maintained an illegal embargo against the G Greater German Reich. However, they have now given us the opportunity to address our concerns as the first matter of discussion before a nation's relationship can truly mend. Ask them to lift the embargo. We need aid and the embargo gone. Uh, we shall ask them, because we don't really need it, so, but they accept. The U.S. has accepted our demands, making a wise decision for the sake of peace and uh, humility and peace across the entire world. Cool. Yeah. Just ask them. The culture clash now. The American Germany summit was in recess over the weekend, but this wouldn't stop Goring's tireless campaign of winning America's trust. With only a few bodyguards to protect him, Goring made an unexpected visit to Washington, D.C.'s only fast food restaurant, the now legendary White Castle. Hey! As shocked patrons stared at Europe's most powerful man in their restaurant, he ordered one of his bodyguards to order a typical slider with fries and cola combo. He went to sit down. Local news stations quickly converged on the eatery and taped the Reichsmarschall's uncanny lunch. Being interviewed by reporters after leaving the restaurant, he commented that American cuisine is unlike anything I've ever experienced. 
and that the road to peace between our two worlds should be united over the American and German people's affinity for the hamburger. Already pictures of the Fuhrer chowing down in a 10 cent slider have been circulated around the world as well as within the Reich. Peculiar. Wow, that's, that's, man, devs, that's actually really awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Ah, peace in her time. Patton and his delegation has demanded us to make a declaration of peace, promising not to use aggressive forces against other nations similar to the one made back in Munich conferences years ago. Well, we've done this before, so we, we, we pretty much we can do that, yeah. That is, uh, yeah. They make demands of us, we make demands of them. It's a give and take. As long as they're acceptable to what we believe. The Soda Wars. Oh, no. The purpose of the American-German Summit, or the German-American Summit, was to ease relations between the New Reich and the U.S. As a side effect, the cultural exchange has taken place. Amongst the many advisors that came with a goring visit to America, many prominent businessmen like Max Keith, or Keith, of the popular German soda brand Fanta came along seeking to expand their enterprises to the West. Since Fanta had been created due to the American embargo on German goods, it seemed inevitable that Coca-Cola and Fanta would clash for the first time. As an exercise of good faith, the Coca-Cola company hosted an incident. Oh, boy. Uh, international trade uh, soda expedition with the American and German giants as the top competitors. Not one to pass up on so-called soda diplomacy. The vice president of the U.S. and Goring second in command took the opportunity, making grandiose speeches about the fruits of reconciliation over ice cold bottles of the nation's respective beverages. With the convention's success, the American public is becoming torn on the greatest question posed to them yet: Is Fanta or Coca-Cola better? A curious thing, but America rejects our borders. Despite our attempts at peace, Americans have refused to acknowledge our rightful borders, calling the territories unlawful. Uh, president Patton seems to be misjudging the current situation and has failed to realize that they are negotiating with a mighty, gr greater German Reich, and this is fine. So be it. Ending the summit? No, no, this is fine. It's fine, you know. Let, let's, we gotta concede some things. We want to open up, you know, peaceful negotiations with them. If they don't like our borders, you know, so be it. We're just increasing our numbers as we are <laughs> visiting America, whatever. Special strain would be nice. Shadow divisions. Improving production. Our recruitment campaign has been a resounding success. Thousands of young Germans have signed up to join the HIA to fulfill the patriotic duty towards the fatherland. All these new men need rifles to shoot, tanks to, and trucks to drive, barbed wire defense, shovels to dig trenches, and all other manners of equipment. All major armament companies from small arms manufacturers like Mauser to tank matter makers like Porsche have been provided with specific directives and instructions drafted by the armaments production board to help keep increase their production. They will be aided by various governmental agencies to help them in the endeavor from facilitating raw materials, supplies, to the necessary labor needed from the east. Very cool. Very, very cool, actually. Advanced light battery. Very good, very good. Uh, medium caliber semi armor piercing shell. Very good as well. Do we have any ships? Yes, we do. No longer heroes day. That's fine. Throw on those cruisers right there. That would be very, very good. I really want to know what else is going to happen with this uh, summit. I really want to know. Because they reject our borders, but I still want to have diplomatic ties. I still want that. Ammunition upgrades. Very cool. Let's go ahead and grab. Not that. And we'll to grab that. Waffenträger auf E or I. Fumsisch. SB artillery. Nice. Come on, give me more events. I want to, I want to read more. I want more of the summit. Because I, I didn't end the summit yet. Like, we, we were like, oh, well, you don't like our borders. You know, it is what it is. We could have had a civil war, but, you know, we chose not to. Poland is a thing of the past. I mean, if you really want us to, we could probably find some territory and push them out. Like, I don't know. Maybe, like, over here. And the Oral, or Axe Commissar Oral, we could have like something, I don't know, something like crazy, like Nova Polska. We could call it like a New Poland, you know, put them, put them out where they need to be. Are these, oh, these are still not cores of us. I really wish, it's 63, we should be able to get a focus to actually core these areas. It's just insane, it's, it's, you know, it's almost, I forget. In the TWR timeline, what year did World War II end? Was it 45 or something maybe? Maybe not? Um, integration. Overseas testimonies, maybe that'll help us out, maybe some more, I, I, I doubt it, but we could try that. Uh, we're still building stuff up. Our GDP has probably been growing a little bit more. 295? We are we are catching up. We're just a little bit less, more than 30 away from them, which is great. If this is going to cast, that would be great. Let time go on some more. And it appears that this will probably not be the final episode. There's going to be one more episode after this. So that we can finish up our focus tree, because I've been, I've been barreling down this focus tree as fast as possible. I'm trying to go quickly, quickly, quickly. Peace was never an option. Oh, man, I, I, I'm going to assume that maybe America has things over there that we have to deal with. But, you know what, let's finish this off this episode with one or two more things. Focuses. The Germans have always been the technological pioneers of civilization. Our jet aircraft, the Red Air Force, our missiles decimated Russian cities, our U-boats with their self-sustaining oxygen supplies, laid in rest for hours and ravished convoys. And ravished convoys. Automatic rifles moving, moved mow down the Bolshevik hordes, and many other countless small innovations that utterly changed warfare from something as small as individual rifles, radio sets for tanks, to complex warfare ideas such as the Blitzkrieg. But in recent times, the German technological advances have grinded down to a halt. Most notably, the Uran Project, which was barely completed, and the West has clearly achieved a lead in technology in the last 
last few years. But for, of course now, the Fuhrer has been very worried about this widening technological gap and necessitated the required requisite funding in order the OKW to release servicemen with proper techno technical backgrounds to expand and form new research divisions to get on par with the technology of the West. Um, we'll do that one. We'll do one more focus after this and we'll call it an episode. I really want more events, things to happen between the potential thaw between us and the U.S. Even though it seems like it might be over already. You know what? Hold on. We got political power. Can we improve relations with Patton? Let's try that. I doubt it will do very much, but we can see what happens. Naval aviation, super carriers. It looks like they're pretty much done with their focus tree as well. Um, oh, uh, cool. I will probably explore more of this off screen as well, just to see if we can improve relations with the U.S. some more. I would really like to see that. I guess, and a good goal would for us to get higher GDP than America. Just because, I, I think that would be a good goal. Oh, we're, we're catching up. We're catching, oh, we're almost, almost 30 away from them. If we get one more episode, we can probably push past them just, just barely. We can probably do it. I know we can. We, we completely neglected this too, but that's fine. Overseas evidence. That's okay. We need more war support too. Ooh. Oh, his part of the fleet, yeah. Stability looking real nice. Real good right there. Please, come on, give me another event. Something, something we can indulge ourselves with. Because if you see the fat man going to White Castle and Germans in America drinking Coca-Cola and Fanta together, I think that's pretty cool. In 1963, sure, Pan's leader. Actually, it's 63, so we should get a new leader within two, three years, right, in America? We should be able to see something unique and different. That'd be kind of cool. Ah, Mr. Schmitz, very good, very good. And let's go ahead and uh, drop tanks, nah, heavy aircraft, let's get some air refueling because we can do that. And we shall do our last focus for the episode. Focus on infantry doctrines. The infantry doctrines need to be revised. Old tactics for the here emphasize on the machine gun, and gun role in the squad, but a pioneering development of the automatic rifle like the SCG-44 has made it possible to decrease the emphasis on the machine gun and replace it with long-range sniper marksmen as a result. Rifles are limited in range due to our older rifles like the Carnegie k This and other developments like nuclear warfare means NBC protocols, etc., and have called for a complete revision of our infantry doctrines and because in this end, only the boots on the ground can actively assess the situation and bring about victory. But unfortunately, that is going to be the final thing we're going to do for this episode. Now, there will be one more episode after this because I want to get through hopefully the rest of the focus tree by the end of the next video, which is going to take a while probably as well. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this interesting episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall finish up this campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.